What's up guys, welcome back once again to Diddy Reviews. Today I'm doing something different, it's not a review today. Today it's basically a test of an old CPU that I have, a 7700K, and we're going to see basically if it can still game in 2022 slash 2023, depending on when this video goes live. Um, so stick with me, we'll do some benchmarks and we'll see how it goes. Right, so as I mentioned in the intro, um, we're testing a 7700K today on a Z270 motherboard from Gigabyte, um, obviously the the processors from Intel, um, and we're doing it in this test system here at the moment. Um, this is my old PC. Um, the 7700K is what seven years old or something now, um, so it's very old CPU. Some people might still be running it and thinking of going up to a newer graphics card. Um, and basically, I'm going to look today at whether it's worth doing that or if you're going to be leaving a lot of performance on the table with a, such an old CPU. Now, this CPU back in its day was the top of its class in sort of uh, desktop uh, processors. Um, so it was just around or just before the first Ryzen came out. Um, so it's kind of, um, I think a lot of people will be running this still probably. Um, I've had it for a long time, as you can see. Um, so we're just going to have a look, see what sort of um, uh performance you're leaving on the table um, so in terms of test systems this one is a 7700k z270 motherboard with a samsung m.2 ssd in it uh, crucial a 16 gigabyte crucial ram um yeah and it's in the the uh anides cube case we're plenty of fans and stuff so calling is not going to be an issue and we're using a be quiet pure loop 240 the test system I'm pit pitting this against is my current system, which is a 5900X on a B550-E from Asus, the Strix board, um, with the same RAM in it, and I'm using a 3080 Founders Edition in both systems. So basically we can see what the bottlenecks are like with a more modern GPU as opposed to a really old CPU um, to see what the, what the difference is at all, if there is any at all, which um, there is. <laughs> Spoiler alert. And one thing I will say before I get into these is the current pricing that I've looked on eBay for the 7700K is between around £120 and £170 for the CPU alone. Um, it's not too bad. Um, it was about £350 when it first came out, so it's it's not lost that crazy amount of money. You can't pick one up. Well, I've not seen one for like £20, £30 yet. So, um, yeah, it's still, still a fairly expensive CPU, um, and you might be able to get something newer like a 5600x or something like that probably for around the same sort of price and also motherboards for this um i've had a look at the z270s um this is the z270x uh gaming 7 um from aorus gigabyte and um, which was one of sort of the higher tier boards back in its day and it was only it was around 220 pounds boards these days are, are crazy money um especially if you're going high end um, and these boards, not this one in particular, um, but boards similar, I've seen on eBay for around £50 at the lowest. So you're looking at, with CPU and motherboard, you're looking at just over £200 um, for the full sort of set. Um, and obviously then you need RAM and everything like that. So if you are looking at buying an old system, that's the kind of price you should be looking at paying. Um, so, like I say, let's get let's get on with the results. Um, so you can see uh, basically what I found. Um, I did four uh, four tests: uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, F one uh, as my game tests, and then Unigen Superposition because it gives you a, a good sc a score to to measure, and Time Spy as well. Um, and I did them both in 1080p and 1440p. So you can see sort of how the bottleneck changes depending on the resolution. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a 4K monitor, so I can't do a 4K test. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. So first of all, on the 5900X with the 3080, on Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, we're looking at an average of 199 frames per second and a low of 169, so very good results. And at 1440p, we were looking at 160 average and 122 low. Now, going over to the 7700K, we were looking at 121 frames on average and 90 as a low. And on 1440p, we're looking at 133 as a high and 94 as a low. Yes, the score was higher on 1440p than it was in 1080p, which suggests to me a massive bottleneck um, at 1080p. And that was proven as well be honest with you, on both tests, um, 
Shadow of the Tomb Raider actually tells you how much the was GPU bound, and it was 0% for both of these tests. So you can see there's a massive bottleneck there. It should be really high on the GPU, but it wasn't, so there is a big bottleneck there. Then uh, let's go on to F1. Uh, so on the 5900X system, at 1080p, we've got 306 high and 248 low. Sorry, 306 average and 248 as a low. And then at 1440p, we've got 248 as an average and 205 as a low. And then going over to the 7700K system, uh, at 1080p, we've got an average of 226 and a low of 181. So as you can see, there's still a bottleneck there on this game too. And then at 1440p, it got a little bit better. There wasn't as much of a bottleneck. We've got an uh, average of 210 and a low of 172. So there is still a, f a decent amount, 30 frames per second difference between those. Um, so you are still seeing a bottleneck there. Then we went on to Unigine Superposition. Now, I didn't want to run custom, custom runs on this because you can't get a sort of accurate read on it. Um, so I ran... Uh, instead of 1080p and 1440p for my easier test, I ran 1080p medium and my harder test, I ran 1080p extreme. Um, and this does really push your system, um, especially your GPU. Um, so on the 5900X system, uh, 1080p medium got 31,757. And on the 7700K system, we got 26,546. So we lost. 5,000 points there, which is quite a massive amount, to be fair. Um, so you are losing a lot. There's a lot being left on the table if you're going 1080p. And then 14, uh, sorry, 1080p Extreme on the 5900X system, we got a score of 11,284. And on the 7700K system, we got a score of 10,940. So about one and a half, well, 1,300, something like that, we lost on that. So we didn't lose anywhere near as much. Um, so it suggests the bottleneck was relieved a little bit going into the extreme. It's put a lot more pressure on the GPU than it is the CPU at that, at that point. Um, so you can see as you step up the resolutions and the, the qualities, um, you should be able to bring that benchmark, uh, sorry, that bottleneck down a little bit. And then finally, we went on to Time Spy. And we ran a custom, I have to run a custom to change, well, I had to run a custom to change it to 1080p or 1440p. On the 5900X, we got a GPU score of 27,005. This is at 1080p. And on the 7700K system, we got a score of 22,457. So again, we've lost 4,500 points there, um, which is pretty big. I did do a CPU test as well, which doesn't really matter because it's, it's bound to get beaten because it's a CPU test. And the 5900X scored 13,800, whereas the 7700K only scored 20, uh, 2,516. Um, so a huge difference there, over 10,000 points there. But it's to be expected as a 7700K going up against the 5900X. And then in 1440p on Time Spy, um, GPU score on the 5900X system was 18,284, and on the 7700K system was 16,075, so we lost just over 2,000 points there. Obviously, again, not as big as a, a drop, um, but it's still quite a big drop, and you are leaving performance on the table there, um, but it did, it did shrink that gap a little bit. So there we have it. 7700K in 2022 slash 2023, because this video is probably going to be live in 2023 to start off. Um, is it still worth buying for gaming um, with modern GPUs? Yes and no. Um, no, if you're if you're going to be running, I'm running a 3080. If you're running that or anything higher, you need to upgrade your CPU, really. Um, yes, you are going to alleviate the bottleneck a little bit if you go up to 4K and you're gaming at 4K. You will alleviate that bottleneck a little bit, but I believe you're still going to be leaving um, some performance on the table that you've paid money for. Um, so if you're looking at 3080s and above, then definitely look at upgrading your CPU and obviously motherboard and everything as well, um, because you don't want to be paying some, for something you're not going to get. Um, can it still game uh, on, on the yes side? Um, yes, it can, um, but you obviously... It all depends on what GPU you're putting it with. 
Personally, I would think if you're still running a 7700K and an old GPU and you want to upgrade and get some more performance, then you're probably going to be best going for something like a 3060 Ti. Even a 3070 or 3070 Ti might be pushing it a bit and you might still be leaving performance on the table, but probably a 3060, 3060 Ti or 6700 XT, that kind of thing would be sort of ideal um, sort of upgrade path for this. Um, and you're not going to be leaving performance on the table because this is still a capable CPU. It still performs okay. Um, it's not the worst thing out there. Um, but they, there you go. You can see that you see the results. You can see whether it's worth doing or if you've already got one. I say if you've already got one and you don't want to upgrade your CPU and you want to upgrade your GPU, go for a lower a lower GPU. So I could say 3060, 3060 Ti. If you haven't got one, you're looking at building, trying to get a cheaper PC. So you're looking at building second hand. I'd personally stay away from it. Um, I'd go probably a 5600X is probably going to outperform this. Fortunately, I don't have one, so I can't test it and, and check. But if you're spending £150 on this CPU, then definitely look at something like a 5600X and pair it with like a B550 or maybe even a B450 if you want to save some more money um, because obviously you will have to buy a new motherboard as well. Or even something like a 10th gen Intel, 11th gen, 12th gen, 13th gen, if you if you want to go that sort of route on the lower end of sort of the i5 scale, then go for something like that as well. Um, so in conclusion, uh, final thoughts of this video is if you haven't already got one and you're looking at building one, don't buy one. Um, just, just get something either new or newer um, on the second hand market. Like I say, 5600X around that sort of, uh, aim for around that sort of uh, price range. Um, if you've already got one and you're looking at upgrading your GPU, say from a, I don't know, 1080 Ti or something like that, then go for a 3060 or 3060 Ti and you shouldn't be too disappointed and hopefully won't believe any uh, performance on the table um, and you should be happy. So I hope this uh, was interesting, guys. I hope it's helped someone out there. Um, that's my plan was to basically uh, to help anyone that's looking at seventy seven hundred K or still got one, and um, to let them know whether it's worth going for something like a thirty eight or above. And it's not. Um, so like I say, I hope this uh, hope this helped. I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and uh, please, if you haven't subscribed already, please don't forget to subscribe. Um, I try and do two videos a week. Uh, I've got more reviews coming. Uh, I've got more testing and stuff like that coming. I've got some. Uh, personal projects coming as well which I'm going to be videoing um, so for you to see I'm going to do some some modding and stuff like that and um, so please don't forget to subscribe if you like this video give it a like if you didn't like it give it a dislike if you want to let me know in the comments why you didn't like it or why you did like it then please do so and like I say don't forget to leave any comments in the comment section below if you have any questions or if you want to give your opinion on it um, I'm always happy to hear from you and always try and get back to you uh, so thank you for watching and I'll see you guys soon goodbye